Long lever, which means leg is straighter. Just short lever, long lever, forces me to have to have hip extension. But when, when people are doing reverse lunges, is this knee behind my butt here? No. Well, that's why, and when am I really loading? It's another squat. I've just figured out another way to show my squats. So think about your own programming. What ways have you loaded the hip and extension this week besides that run? What'd you do in the gym? Coach? Nothing. That's normal. That's okay. That's, that happens a lot. Coach? Nothing this week. Nothing this week. Good. Two for two, the best coaches in the world. Sir? I don't coach. I don't coach. <laughs> Perfect answer. Ma'am? Bulgarian split squats. Okay. Now look at the volume of loading and hip extension compared to what you're doing with swings and hinge and pull, all of those. Now you've got some in, you get credit, full credit, better than those guys. It's not a contest, but you're winning. Now look at the volume compared to how much time you're spending in hip extension. What other movements do I have accessible to me that I can load that hip and extension? Give me one. Can I put a band on my waist and run against something? Okay. What else? Great. Yeah, absolutely. Some, some kind of that. Yeah. Working on that. That's exposing the hip. How much of that is actually happening on the back leg? Is this really a back leg? It's some exposure, right? But less loading of the leg. What's that? Slip so pushes. Great. We're getting there. Starting to see some and some loading in that pattern. Fantastic. I want to show you that don't get sucked into which tools. What's the shape? Am I loading the shape, yes or no? So here's our quick test. And I want you to think in warm up, even if it's not part of the main piece, I'm going to be exposing my athletes to some hip extension no matter what. That's at least they're going to come and get their hip extension vitamin with you. So take a big lunge for me. And not a jerk lunge, so it, don't let it be wider than really like what your standing position is. So I want you to see, see your back leg? You'd be caught flat-footed and you'd be killed in this position, right? So you're gonna need to be athletic. Perfect, and as soon as he did that, his feet went straight. Can you feel all five of your toes? Perfect, so now we're loading this isometric position. Turn that back, there you go, now you're there. Can you breathe in this position? Turn that back foot a little more, other way. There you go, now it's straight. That's me going straight, right? Can you squeeze your butt and keep that knee behind your hip and go all the way to the ground? Notice what many of us do. Just brought that knee forward, just like John said, right? And you're making that face, like you got crazy horse eye face, which means that you're struggling for that. I need to be able to have this knee behind my butt. So go ahead and come all the way to the ground. I've got my toes there. Take that knee behind your butt and squeeze your butt and stand up powerfully one centimeter. Do you feel powerful in that position? That's not one centimeter. You're like, oh yeah, I got this. I'm right back up to my strength position. Remember, we're trying to make sure our athletes can access that position. You're like, holy crap. <laughs> Who said I was responsible for this? OK, that's our quick test. Do the other side, because you just did your best side. Let me see the other side. You did your like jerk show pony side. How long can you squeeze to the ground with that butt engaged, all five toes going straight? So look at your toes. Perfect. Great. Love that. Now, are you holding your breath? And why are you holding your breath on a body weight <laughs> exercise? You're the strongest person in the room. Notice where your torso is. Oh, look at that. Super cool. Here, hold that at your chest. Good. Now he's not going to lean forward with that anymore. OK. Pause for a second. Put that down. We have a choice now. Of one is making sure that we're A in this position. Second thing is that we have a lot of choice about where the external load is. Now, when we look at load, we typically use load as a way of adding resistance, resistance loading the tissues pro with progressive overload, instead of using load to constrain a body position or body shape. So let me give you a couple examples of why, one of the reasons I'm such a Chris Duffin fan. Chris has made the greatest barbell in the world, and I spend more time deadlifting in a split stance than I do in a regular stance. 
So suddenly this tool gives me additional degree of freedom to challenge some positions, because really that's what I'm trying to do. At some point, you can be strong enough, believe it or not, but we need to make sure that you're exposing yourselves. The transformer bar, I could do what? I could swing that transformer bar way forward, and it forces me, what, to have an upright torso. So I can have my hands by my side. I can be in a front rack. What happens if my arms are over my head? Does that suddenly increase torso demand? Well, let's try it. Go ahead, arms above your head. Do the gun yoga for me, yoga gun. Good. And now squeeze your butt and hit the same position without going into full banana back. Piece of cake. Better, same, worse. Harder. Are you holding your breath? Now watch this. Can you take 100% breath there? You're holding your breath. You're like, <gasps> come on. We're going to do some aerobic work here. Do you own that position? Your leg is flying way off to the side. Do you see that? Good. Pause. Come over here, would you? What's your name, coach? Bryce. Bryce Kelly. On your stomach, please. Look, I don't know anything about Bryce, except that he's very handsome and very strong. I'm going to touch you now for instructional purpose only. This is the leg that you had trailing. Was that the leg? Yeah. Okay. So one of the things that I noticed about him, oh, ho, 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 ho. whoa, bro. That's the end of his hip flexion, or his le lower leg flexion. So remember, I don't know anything about him. I don't know what he did yesterday. I don't know his injury history. He's in some weird cult that doesn't believe in hip extension. <laughs> called CrossFit. And, uh, but what I want you to see here is that his heel doesn't come anywhere near his butt. In fact, I'm pushing against the wall. So hold that for me right there. Now, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Your hamstring's going to cramp. If we were having lunch and my elbow goes stuck bent, would you think that was weird? So why is this OK? He's still the strongest and the fastest in the room, but we are potentially exposing the knee and the back to additional loads that they don't, shouldn't have to deal with. And more importantly, I found an opportunity to potentially unload his knee, unload his back, unload his Achilles by just doing what? Restoring his native range. Part of my goal as a coach is to expand my role, and that's reclaiming range, reclaiming capacity. He doesn't ever have to be full, which, by the way, is heel to butt but he has to be better than this. And all I have to do is make him better and better. And the first order of business is exposure. But I see a lot of people who are like, my knee hurts or my low back hurts. And I'm like, dude. And notice that I'm assessing him with this leg flexion. This is just a short lever test. And look, his hip isn't even in extension yet. He's still in flexion. He doesn't have basic range. And you can see how stuff, remember, I don't know if he's got a mechanical knee or what's going on here. It doesn't matter. I'm wondering, can we improve that? Does that make sense? So the first order of business, thank you, coach, is for us to say, can I expose my athlete? So look at your warm-ups. How much hip extension are you doing in warm-ups? Even if it's just lunging and hanging out at end range, making kids ball pass or arms above the head or just spending time here. Like, are we in these positions? Second. Can we load in isometrics? So there's a whole bunch of dumbbells around here for me. And let me show you one of my favorite places to drop in this hip extension isometric, tissue exposure. So grab a heavy dumbbell for me. And I'm going to show you this. There's a whole bunch of dumbbells around. Grab a whole bunch of dumbbells. Just grab something that feels heavy. You just need one heavy dumbbell. Whatever's heavy. You're not going to lift it. You're just holding it in a suitcase. OK. Same lunge shape. Put that in the opposite arm, opposite leg. Get that cross pattern loading. Butt is squeezed. Now I want you up on your toe on the front. What we do there is I'm making the feet work, but I'm firing up that hip flexor so the hip can be stable so that I can extend the hip more effectively. Work on breathing. Shut your mouth. Breathe through your nose. 30 seconds on or do seven big breaths. Show me you can control that. Again, see if you can take that a little bit narrower so you're not so in a jerk, right? We're more looking like a lunge, right? Stopping in my available range, fantastic. That's where I have butt control. I didn't care how deep you were. Good. Are you 50-50 in your weight? You're not 50-50. Shift it back. Don't lie to me. I can tell 50-50. This is what I do for a living. All I do is look at people's, oh, that's 30, 70, I know. Try the other leg. 
The rules are, can I feel on my toes? Both sides? Is my butt squeezed? Is my torso upright? Can I breathe? Butt squeeze is the magic. This is neuromuscular drill. I want you to be able to teach your body and your brain that when your hip goes behind you, your butt turns on. Not late, remind, but my butt is on and I'm matching those patterns. Breathing, perfect. recover. Is that easy to drop in with your athletes? Check the box. Did some hip extension isometrics. Can I do rear foot elevated split squat isometrics? Yes. Put that foot on that box. Let's jump it way out. Good, and lower yourself down, butt squeezed. Keep going, you can, that's it, that's it. Hold, torso upright. Remember, I have multiple ways. How can I make this more challenging for him? That's right, I can start making the load awful. I can give him hundreds, I can give him 50s, I can give him 10s. But the idea is, this is a simple place to throw this in between sets, isn't it? This is easy, we have a th ton of these around. This, this rear foot elevated isometric, great. 30 seconds, repeat. That's tough, isn't it? No one likes that. Now, let's talk about simple ways to integrate this hip extension ideal into simple things like pressing. Find a dumbbell you can easily press. Don't all go for the hundreds, I know. Something easy, doesn't matter, just press it. How many of you have ever pressed from a split stance? Great. Did you press from a split stance this week? Excellent. Did you, how about last week? Okay, so you did it once in high school, cool. Let's go ahead and get into a split stance position. You don't have to be up on your toe, just regular split stance. What I want, feet straight, butt squeezed, and just press. What's that look like? Suddenly, we can see, are you comfortable bending your knee? Could you absorb force? Pause. Can you dip down in that position? Perfect, that's how we know it's the truth, right? Good. So suddenly, during our warm-up sets, we can be loading this hip. We didn't have to do it with a 1,000-pound deadlift. Try your other side. We love seesaw press here. You can do this with a barbell. Do it with a plate. Ground chest overhead with a plate. The idea is now we are actually loading that hip and having to fight that resistance during some of our basic warm-up, basic exposures. My daughters do so much pressing from a split stance. Why? Because they need more hip extension than they do bilateral squat power. Does that make sense? We've got to load those tissues. Now, we're on this theme of constraining the environment to change or load the pattern or position, or in my language, I say archetype. This is a lunge shape, hip extension dominant. But of course, I'm getting all of the whole chain in there. If I take my front foot and put it up on a box, what does that do to my torso? If I'm here and I put it up on a box, I can take that load right out of that, right? That means I can increase that load, but what does that do to the back leg? Try that same press with your foot up on something. There's boxes, there's platforms, there's piles of weights. Yep. Uh, no, go ahead and put your front foot facing it. What'd you notice? <laughs> oh, what, coordination and balance is part of this? Excellent. And remember, I'm saying, hey, what do my athletes have available? Isometrics, tempo, I can go slow in these positions, I can expose these positions, hit that other side. What are my rules? Can you squeeze your butt? Can you feel your toes? Great. If you can open it up and still have those rules engaged, open it up. If you can't, where do I want? I want you to train in positions you have control. You being able to do the splits does nothing for me athletically. Does that make sense? Unless you can be active during those positions. Okay, let's talk about my next favorite way to smoke you. Go ahead, coach. I'm right-handed, but I can barely press. But my left arm is just like, I can crank it out. What does that say about the hip? More stable here. Might be. Something wrong over here. Not something wrong, but maybe more deficient on one side. If I am deficient or have incomplete hip extension or don't have control, this is what happens. 
right? And suddenly I'm not going to handle that load. So what's nice is that you were like, suddenly we're like, hey, there's a different side to side. Hey, I wonder if that's going on with my hips. Can I, first order of business, not mobilize. First order of business is expose. If you need to improve your hip extension, the first thing I'm going to ask you is, do you have full hip extension? If we're trying to give bottom of back pain, I'm going to ask you, how are you loading your hip in extension during your training program? Because that could be a, a contributor. One of the ways that we as coaches can influence pain with our athletes is to expose them to normative ranges and restore normative ranges. So if you can't do this, I wonder if this is contributing to your shoulder pain. So we're going to find out ways to restore your range of motion. And weird, your shoulder pain went away. That's so weird. Never heard of that before. What's my job as a coach? To train the full normative range and to make sure we can see when our athletes are deficient. It's harder in hip extension because we have so many ways to cheat, right? OK, one of my favorite coaches, Franz Bosch, has this great drill. Grab your dumbbell and just do a muscle snatch for me. Is your butt squeezed? So you're 50-50, your feet straight, the ball of your foot and heel are weighted evenly. Fantastic. Soup. Great. That could be a Cuban curl from this position, doesn't matter. Now, can I go from this position to landing in this hip extension position? So the leg that goes forward, the dumbbell will be the other side. So get into a jump stance and take it. And then hold that position. Pause. Ah, so we just added some eccentric control there. Perfect. Give me a couple on that side while you feel that out. Don't be afraid to be powerful. Is your butt squeeze? Can you feel all your toes? Fantastic. OK, so we can be doing snatches, muscle snatch in that position. Super simple. How many of you guys still split snatch? Anyone? Love it. It's like an old one of those odd lifts. The young kids are like, whoa, what was that? Split snatch. Now, let's just take that split snatch idea and let's actually load the back leg. Do it on, step onto that pattern. So look what I'm doing. Have to extend the hip and continue extending the hip. That's a big range of motion. I like that. That looks like sport. You just warm that up. That's different. And you can see that right side is just restricted. Make sure that, again, it should be opposite side. So left leg up, right arm in the head. Yep. Pin that cross pattern. And you see, is that platform maybe too tall? Fantastic. Love it. Show me there's a definitive end. If you hit that spot and it looks squishy, I'm like, you don't know where that is. I want you to see, and there's an end to that position. Butt is on. Click. Why? I want to be loose until I need to be stiff. Right? Again, what I'm showing you, crew, is that there's a ton of ways to work this in and think about loading hip extension without having to do this. It's so easy to have this exposure. We can be thinking, I need to get you stronger and faster, but I also just need to expose your tissues. Can you think of a way to jump rope where you would load your hip in extension? Well, yes, <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, that's why I make every one of my athletes do stupid jump rope games all day long. All right, let's gallop across the room. <laughs> Loading that back leg, hip extension. Not much hip demand, a whole lot of calf demand. Because this is the magic. Do people tear their calves in this position? Where do people tear their calves? OK, you can see my thinking. So it's about tissue exposure. All right, let's do this on one leg now. So now I'm interested in, can I generate a lot of force off a single leg, and then still have control off that? What's that look like? I know, you're like that 20-pound dumbbells taunting me. Do it without that, then do it up on a box. Think about how slow your single leg work is. So slow. What'd you notice, coach? 
That size restricted. Own the shape. Crew, totally okay to make mistakes. Wobble, own, and you see you never own that position? Own that position. Recover once you're stable. Whoa. Excellent. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Great, recover. All right, put those down for a second. Homework. You have to think, where am I loading hip extension in my programming with my athletes? Is that warm up? Is that games? Is that conditioning? Is that strength? Is that isometric in between sets? Can I wor work it into my warm ups for pressing overhead? There's so many places to load this, but what we're seeing is we're not loading it. And I don't want to give you one more thing you have to do with your athletes. Our programming time is so dense already, we're hustling to get through the main courses. And I want to make sure that we're at least thinking, hey, where do I stack this in? The very least, lowest hanging fruit, throw in these isometrics. I showed you two of them today. Rear foot elevated split squat, coming up onto a big, just isometric holds, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off as a finisher. How can I take some of my overhead work, use that as a warm up? Can I at least expose my athletes to some walking lunges, holding a 10 pound medicine ball to get the torso upright? Is there ways to, to play with that? So that we're thinking about supporting with load the positions that we're transferring and working from when we're doing all the running. Because that's crucial. I run hills twice a week. I've had a total knee replacement, I'm two, two years out. I run hills because if I don't run a hill, I am not an, a human being. You have to extend the hip. You have to do it fast, you have to do it load, you have to have those exposures. Think about how you would assess that. We're gonna keep doing tomorrow when we'll do some talking, we'll do some more, more hands-on assessment. I want you to move into a, a realm of being able to put your hands on the people you're working with and help them assess. The Ready State app, I don't know if you guys know we have an app, it has the best movement test in the planet where you can assess your athletes, and more importantly, they can assess themselves around all of these minimums. This heel to butt, Couch. Has everyone done the couch stretch before? You've heard of that before? You're welcome. It's my best, most evil thinking. But that's why I'm such a fan of that stuff. That's why I was putting a band on it, and that was just a different way of loading the hip anteriorly, wasn't it? If I have young people, people injured, people who are trying to protect, I always have isometrics, and I always have tempo. It doesn't always have to be faster. It doesn't always have to be heavier. I can go slower. I can regress those things. Any rehab program on the planet is only doing one of two things. They're either going slower or they're pausing. That's it. That's the secret to rehab. So you can take any exercise that you're doing in the gym, slow it down or stop it, and now you are rehab experts. What positions do the athlete need to be in? Does a person need to be in to be an athlete? They need to extend their hip. How are, what are the tools I have available to me? What, what implements do I have? What's the training age? And then suddenly, rinse, wash, repeat. But just like Derek's going to say, hey, how can we think about rotation? I want you to think about hip extension. And if you can't extend your hip, you cannot dissociate your body. Make sense? Questions? Are you guys doing a good job, or can you do a better job of extending your hip? So say we all. And I will say, I had the same conversation with Stuart McMillan who is one of the best 100 meter Olympic track coaches in the world, his job is to make people sprint and, and we have this same conversation. How do we make the gym support and the diagnostics so that we can do the sport? That's really the game. Other questions? Any questions? Coaches are my jam. I work with all of these teams. I don't know their athletes. I don't care. I'm all about coaches. Like, you know, Coaches like, we work with this athlete, I'm like, nah, really. Like, Can I work with your staff? That's what I'm really interested in. So I am like a pig in, pig in heaven right now. So if, uh, again, my email is kelly at the ready state. That is my direct email. My friends call me Kel. It is such a pleasure to be here in a room full of smart coaches. Thank you guys so much.